Hi, welcome to this second class about uh, cybersecurity. In this case, um, uh, let me just um, come back a little bit in uh, what we talked about last uh, week. So we make a little bit introduction on what is cybersecurity, at least from the point of view of the users. Um, why that it matter for me and my family, uh, some common sense rules uh, to apply in the physical world, and also common threats in the cyberspace and how those threats uh, look like. And some example of phishing and ransomware, we also touch some of these uh, concepts today. So today um, we will also about talking about sorry about some hacking, just to give an idea of how these uh, things evolve. Not also for not only sorry for this, uh, individual, but for company, a very large organization. So um, in this case, we also talk about um, some recommendations on the on how to do some data detox, as they call, and there are multiple reference about this. Uh, what is the difference between the VPN and Tor and, uh, and how they, they work, essentially, a couple of videos about that, and, and um, cybersecurity and blockchain. I think I will skip this last one for, for today because I think it's a lot of things already, but uh, we can also talk about it for sure. Um, so come back to this um, introduction. Uh, the idea was all essentially ask questions to yourself before to do things in the cyberspace and any interaction that we have with elements coming from the internet, coming from somebody else uh, uh, um, on your computer, in your, in your device. So essentially because what was happening most of the time is that we are not dealing with uh, individual you know, person trying to hack in us like a, in a movie, you know, a guy hiding in a basement doing this, but uh, it's most of the time are automatic software that is scan and go through all the different connections in the internet and try to, to identify patterns and take advantage of those. So when we know at least some of these patterns, we can avoid them and, and in that case, you know, be a victim, so to say. That's at least the, the, the main idea. So some of these concepts about the hacking uh, or sample of the hacking that I was uh, planning to, to show are mainly um, a right to the users or a right to the organization to this uh, phishing and uh, ransomware. So um, again, we, we mentioned already what the phishing is, but, and I guess many people is already aware of this, uh, uh, but it's very important because it's a, it's a very useful tool anyway. You know, even when it's, it's have uh, many years already on the internet, still we as a human tend to, to be very curious. So phishing is a very powerful tool, um, especially with, uh, when it's applied with social engineering, you know, to essentially cash, cash our attention. But even more important are these kind of um, hacks that look to, to find some purpose that is no, only because they want to damage something. So no, every hacking is just to destroy, but also to profit of that. And that's a very, very um, important point also to understand. So I have another video here and I will uh, play it. The, the audio will also generate is, is myself <laughs> um, giving some of these um, classes of high work. So again, a continuation of the last time. <clears throat> Hi, welcome again. We already saw that email is used in order to send links that will take you to a fake server that in some cases will try to make you log in in a, in a copy of your social network or your bank and try to steal your, your credential. But sometimes this, this, the same kind of links or they say the same kind of resource in this case um, uh, spam emails can be, can be used to make you download a particular file. So in this case, they don't want to steal your data, but they, what they want to steal is your computer itself. And we will see how they mean. So sometimes you get a link that, again, if it's a, if it's a good server, again, maybe it's just uh, a colleague who is trying to send you a file uh, that is hosted somewhere else. So it can be a PDF, you know, a, a document. <clears throat> but the same kind of link can be used one more time for these fake servers. And once you click here, what you, you will do is that you will download a file that even when they have the good extension, they can be that doc, that PDF, etc. cetera. This is in fact a, a shell. So they are not really giving you this kind of, of file, but it's giving you a small application. So, <clears throat> Many of us already see in our browser. So this is the window again 
any browser that we, we use, and we click that link, or maybe we, we just copy and paste in the bar without notice, and this link is a path directly to this file with that particular extension again. <clears throat> so we are presented with a pop-up window most of the time that say, okay, you want to save it, you want to open it, this is a file to download, okay? And again, because we think that this is a, this is a, a legitimate file, so somebody that we know sent it to us, we save this file into our computer. If we believe that this is a, a, a text file, uh, sorry, uh, yes, a file with, with a document, so essentially we will double click that file, or open it in some way, Sometimes, most of the time we just do over click, double click, sorry, and we let our computer to decide the application that can be used. So uh, again, if you will receive a PDF and depending on of your operating system, you can uh, open the file automatically, automatically in preview, if you, in, in, in Mac OS, for example, and, uh, or if you open a file that is that uh, doc, it's an extension for documents and the Microsoft Office um, applications. So essentially we just double click instead of choose explicitly an application to open that file. When that happens, if this file is in, in fact a small application that the, the hacker just made you download in your computer, this file will go into your computer or into your mobile device and run a code in the background. In the background means that you will not see anything happening. Okay, you just install the application. Every time it's more difficult because sometimes when you when you try to install an application, your operating system was asking you and telling you, do you want to install this? Are you sure? So and you know send you some some warning and say what are you sure what you're doing? And even if we don't pay attention and install this application, your computer right now very probably have been uh, in somebody's control right now. What it means when the when the hacker send this this kind of file, this kind of fake uh, emails, and make the people download file. Imagine that you send it to one million people, and just uh, one percent of the people uh, fall into the into the link and download the file and install the application without knowing. That's a very large number already. <clears throat> so this is a, like a ten thousand people already who install the malware in this case. So that means that they will create a network of computers that now, without the knowledge of the owners of those computers, they are running software. They are running different software. Uh, sorry, a, a software that can do many different things. One is that they can steal your data. So essentially they will extract data from your computer to their particular server where they can once again, store it and sell it or use it against you. The other thing that can happen is that this software can essentially start to send spam as well. And this is very useful for them because right now it's your computer who is doing the dirty job, who is maybe reading your, your contact and, um, and sending a spam with your email account so the people who know you will maybe fall in the same trap because they will say okay this email is coming from from this person that i know is using his or her email address but what is happening is that now your computer without your knowledge is sending email so that can be that they steal your data they now use your computer to send spam they can even right now use many of these computers to do mining to mining of bitcoins or another cryptocurrency so, as you see, no all the cyber attacks intend to use your data or to steal your data to go on through your bank account. But another very valuable resource is the device itself. So we have very powerful computer in our house, very powerful laptops and, and mobile device that can be used if they are hijacked. They can be used by the hacker, by attackers, to perform uh, several activities like sending spam, mining bitcoins, steal information. And if you see this picture from the point of view of maybe somebody who wants to, you know, we have some authority here or some kind of 
uh, res, uh, people who want to understand where it's coming, the, the spam email, try to, to, to catch these people, you will see how difficult it can be because they, they will try to follow the email back and very probably they will fall in one of the computers that is part of this uh, botnet or this set of computers that now are uh, basically, for the point of view of the, the, the production, are, uh, are a property of the hacker. So it's even more difficult to track back to where they, they really are. So that's, that's a very, very uh, important subject. Download files that are, um, that are not intended to us, that we don't know where they are coming from, is, is, can be very problematic because you can uh, give access to your computer, to your, to your hardware, and, and not just to the data. Let me just come back very quickly. What I want to say here is that um, I was just saying that this is the kind of thing that happens when uh, in the video, uh, how this kind of very large network of computer are, uh, when you hear in the news that uh, 10,000, 20,000, half a million of computer were, uh, were hacked. And um, so essentially what happened is that it's a, it's a propagation of this software through different um, countries and, uh, and thousands of computers that the user, in principle, when we do this kind of thing, we just, look at the laptop, the phone and say, okay, I click this, but nothing happened. Maybe just, you know, uh, and, and we tend to forget because there is no an immediate reaction from the computer. So uh, what sometimes happens is exactly that, that is something running on the background in the device and it get connected to this network and start to, to do the, the job for, for the criminal. So one of the things that, again, I was trying to say before is this example of the ransom um, that is essentially when this kind of software that is installed and not now only for individuals. Sometimes you see this, and also as I mentioned, this kind of software is sent it to millions of people. So if you use send it to millions of people, and again, 1%, 0.5% of the people, uh, that is a very small amount in terms of percentage, click on that, it's still uh, 20,000, 10,000 people uh, that, um, that will be hacked. Essentially in this case, the software uh, encrypted all the data in the device, it's asking you for money. So what is happening here is that this, almost now a, a classic in, in the test books. Now it's a screenshot uh, of uh, something will appear in your computer that is essentially a clock and a message that said to you that what is happening. So your files have been encrypted, uh, how you can recover essentially, you, they're asking you to open a Bitcoin wallet and send certain amount of Bitcoin before the clock finish. Um, and if you know, essentially you will lose, you will lose all, the, to do all the data and that's, that's in fact the promise at least that you will lose all the data is completely true because it's almost impossible with the current technology to uh, uh, undo what they do with the, with the encryption. So this is happened not only now for, um, for individuals or for people uh, in their home, but also for very large organizations. I mean, in uh, banks, sometimes hospitals and very large institutions that get hacked in this sense. So the data is encrypted, so it's, it's never stored. It's just uh, put into, into a, uh, a box that nobody can open except them with a key that they, they can send you. And, um, so it's, most of the time it's happening with Microsoft uh, or, or let's say a Windows computer, yes, but uh, it's more and more going to other operating system. Because again, it's a question of quantity. So more people will have a new operating system, they, this software can be targeted more, more of them. So for example, this, this case is a little bit old, but already 200,000 computers around the world were, for example, damaged on this. Uh, sometimes obviously the people don't pay, they just, you know, give up. And that means that the, 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 the data is, is completely lost because even when it's in your computer, you cannot do anything about it. Um, sometimes happens um, that again, it's not only for individuals, but also to very large organization. So this is uh, another example, a more recent um, um, attack, let's say in this case, the, the problem happens in the Microsoft Exchange service. So, so to be generic, this is a very popular software, especially uh, in companies. So in this case, it's different. Here, what is happening is that the attacker install what they call a backdoor. So when the software is installed, and this is a very smart movement because of course this, they didn't hack every single computer. They install, they hack the computer that provide the software. So when the clients download the, an update, they bring it in a legitimate way the, 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 the malware. So there is, was no way to detect it because again, it's coming from a third party. In this case, the, 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 the very same place where you do the automatic update, for example. So what happened here is that this very, very, it was there for, for, for a certain amount of time before it was discovered. And it's a way essentially to spy. So once again, it's another kind of example where people 
is, is doing this not to, to get immediate rewards, but to understand how to, the people is behaving, how the organization is doing, maybe steal some data or, or just testing the technology and do nothing. You know? uh, but um, so in this case, many, many organizations are also uh, impacted. And most of the time, again, the, 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 the very initial problem happens when somebody in one of these very uh, powerful computers do something like a download something that they should uh, do. <clears throat> So um, I think for the time, as I put a note here, I will skip that one, but I will put the slides and this one, lead, one minute video where I explain a little bit more of what is a DODS attack. But essentially another way that the, the hackers try to, in this case, make unuseful at, uh, a, a particular site, a particular website, for example. <clears throat> so something that can be more uh, useful for those is the, um, uh, for those that never use it or never heard about the VPN and Tor, I have a couple of also videos that may a much better job than myself talking about it. Um, so we will see the difference because now it's more and more popular to to see com, um, what to say commercial and advertisement about VPN products and why they should, they should have one. Um, also, less let's say publicized is the, the Tor technology is less publicized because essentially it's free and this kind of service that uh, doesn't monetize in any way. So let's, let's, this should be just a couple of minutes. A VPN connection. You may have heard about it. People use it to protect themselves against hackers, to stream movies and TV shows, and to browse the internet safely. But what exactly is a VPN? First, let's take a look at how your data travels over the internet without a VPN connection. To visit a website, your computer exchanges information with the internet. Your browser sends a variety of different data via your internet service provider to the website you're visiting. Then the website sends back the necessary information and the website appears on your screen. During this exchange of information, your connection often isn't encrypted, which means that malicious parties can easily view your personal data. Your IP address is visible as well. An IP address basically is your online postal code, which indicates who you are and where you are located. With a VPN, this process unfolds a little differently. When you use a VPN, the VPN application encrypts all your data. The encrypted data travels through a secure VPN tunnel via your internet service provider to the VPN server. Then, the VPN server forwards only the necessary and anonymized information accompanied by its own IP address. The VPN connection ensures your privacy is protected and nobody can see what you do online. With a VPN, you remain anonymous. Using the internet becomes a lot safer because the encryption prevents hackers, internet service providers, and governments from accessing your data. In addition, a VPN offers you more freedom. Some websites and apps are blocked in certain countries. This happens for numerous reasons. Because the VPN connection changes the IP address and therefore your virtual location, there are no more limitations when surfing the web. So for anyone who values their online safety, freedom, and privacy, it is recommended to use a VPN connection. Nowadays, anyone can use a VPN. It's easy. Visit vpnoverview.com for more information about VPNs and learn which VPN provider suits you best. So again, this is, this is a service that some company or some institutions some or an organization provide. And um, if you go to the next VPN one here, uh, hold on. Um, So this is what we have here. And I will not go into detail because I already explained in the video very well, but essentially you pass through a VPN server. Yes, and, um, and that one anonymized who you are putting a different IP address or uh, your uh, virtual identity looks like you are um, in another continent, no? Um, and that other IP is the one that interacts with the website. Um, so in, essentially, not the website, neither your internet provider um, knows where, where are you going or where are you coming from so in real life. But this is still passing through some kind of central authority, let's say that is the VPN, the service, uh, this company. So now let's take a look to the, the tour. I uh, also have a video because they, they, again, it's much better, at least in my, from my point of view. But here, the main difference to, to the, the takeaway that I want uh, you to, to, to have is that um, in this case, you will not have a central authority. And that's, that's the key difference also, again, is versus a centralized service that anonymizes your identity and a non-centralized service. 
We've gotten very used to the internet. We're constantly sharing information about ourselves and our private lives. Food we eat, people we meet, places we go, and the stuff we read. Let me explain it better. Right at this moment, if someone attempts to look you up, they will see your real identity, precise location, operating system, all the sites you have visited, the browser you used to surf the web, and so much more information about you and your life, which you probably didn't mean to share with unknown strangers who could easily use this data to exploit you. But not if you're using Tor. Tor browser protects our privacy and identity on the internet. Tor secures your connection with three layers of encryption and passes it through three voluntarily operated servers around the world, which enables us to communicate anonymously over the internet. Tor also protects our data against corporate or government targeted and mass surveillance. Perhaps you live in a repressive country which tries to control and surveil the internet. Or perhaps you don't want big corporations taking advantage of your personal information. Tor makes all of its users to look the same, which confuses the observer and makes you anonymous. So the more people use the Tor network, the stronger it gets, as it's easier to hide in a crowd of people who look exactly the same. You can bypass the censorship without being worried about the censor knowing what you do on the internet. The ads won't follow you everywhere for months, starting when you first clicked on a product. By using Tor, the sites you visit won't even know who you are and from what part of the world you're visiting them, unless you log in and tell them so. By downloading and using Tor, you can also protect the people who need anonymity, like activists, journalists, and bloggers. So download and use Tor, or run a relay. So, yes, uh, it's we kind of very different in the sense that, uh, again, both services will try to do the same, but again, one is somebody providing you the service. The second one is a more, uh, let's say, public way to do it and more um, um, social in this sense, because what is happening is that more people using Tor, it means that more people will look as the videos looks, uh, say, sorry, it will look the same. So it's a, it's a question of more people using it. The, the network is more uh, dispersed around the world and you are, um, you will be more uh, anonymous in this case. So again, it's as the first thing that you can identify here very easily is that this is a free service, while the VPN used to usually is a kind of free at, at a certain point and after you have to pay. Um, <clears throat> so it depends a lot of the philosophy or the things that you would like to have, but um, I think it's a very, very important tool. We use it a lot. Uh, the, the VPNs are provided, for example, in the industries even more now. Uh, I guess I mean, maybe some people watching this uh, are using VPN because to connect to the network of the, of the work uh, or the, the company environment uh, from home, for example. No? But this is still uh, is, um, the, the information that is passing through the servers can be seen by, by the person who owns the VPN versus this, the Tor network. So <clears throat> I wanted to finish this um, um, presentation with a series of recommendations. I think that, that was the, uh, the main reason of all this um, preparation. That is basically to know more or less, uh, or know better, let's say, all the products that we use. For example, Google, that is something that we use so much uh, for everything in this case. Um, they, they have been requested by, especially if you are in the European Union, to get some system in place so that people can know what is the data that is stored, what is the password that is stored, to also try to analyze the, the, the behavior of the user, but not to target things with the advertising, but to suggest uh, weak points where they can, they can um, the, the user can know, for example, um, uh, one of the things I mentioned before is uh, in the previous class is that the happens that the, your email address and password sometimes get stolen and get um, put it into a big package of millions of email address and passwords so other people can use it. So that one of the jobs of some hacker is essentially to collect as many of these credentials, put it in a virtual box, let's say, and sell it. So these companies like Google um, are now asked to scan these kind of, um, those passwords and those logins that were um, exposed and compare it with other resources and tell to the user if some of these passwords are too weak and you should change it because it was found somewhere. So um, this link is very, very, Obviously, it looks different for each of the users. You need to be logged in, but it, it provides a lot of information of, of essentially what they know about you. It's quite um, revealing and also can be very useful. 
Um, the other thing that uh, was mentioned also in the syllabus, and I found it quite useful, I will look at two years ago when I started to do this, and, and the website file looks very different. When I went to, again to prepare this class, I found it that this, the, the setup is much different, um, but also nicer, let's say, with respect to last time. Um, I just want to also invite you to, to come here. They call it Data Detox, and this is produced by the, by the Mozilla Foundation. So it's the same that produced, for example, the Firefox um, web, um, web browser, yes. Um, and it has essentially a series of, of steps that you can do, you know, like a change your device name. We sometimes tend to use our, our own name to name our device. I think that's something that we can stop to do right now and, and put something that is more difficult to identify or something completely meaningless. Um, we can check all the different applications. I, I think it's more like a things that when you heard it sounds very much obvious, but if you follow again the steps, it gives you an idea that you are uh, um, following a, a recipe to get uh, your footprint on the internet uh, less visible or, or to get back some of your privacy. <clears throat> so um, there is a bunch of tips here. Again, it I, I depends a lot of what you will uh, what you want to see, and um, <clears throat> and there is very detailed instruction of what can be. What can what you can do? Sorry, uh, and again, the, the interface is much better than the first time I saw this this website. <clears throat> so this is this is what they call again that, data detox, and it's something that you can even do time to time. Myself, like a um, go to your web, uh, I'm sorry, to your apps in your phone and be sh and check that the permission that they have. Maybe you have application that were for a particular concert two years ago, and obviously you don't need it anymore. But the data is still getting stored and it's, and it's getting information from the device even for something that, again, doesn't, doesn't have any, any sense anymore in, in your device, things like this. <clears throat> so um, yes, is this one of the, the, the one thing I strongly recommend to, to look at. Um, also the recommendation that, again, when you see it, it's kind of obvious, but uh, for me have been very revealing. Um, check the permissions, again, the mobiles and, and desktop application, um, review the different permissions of the plugins. We tend to install things here all this stuff that I'm trying to point here in my own browser, uh, I don't know, Evernote, uh, Google um, Drive. And some of these um, are also applications that are taking data from your device. And maybe sometimes they are just too old and you forgot because you started. It. So it's, it's good to go into this and see if you essentially can turn it off one of these things. Um, as I mentioned, many of these companies have been, I would say, forced uh, more than anything else to uh, put this kind of security settings. So I have the same link for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, in case you want to see uh, what you can find there, because sometimes it happens that um, when there is a data breach, so when it's, it's, uh, something happens like a, somebody hack Facebook, I say, okay, Facebook is just my pictures anyway, so everybody can see it. I am not very worried about it. But sometimes we also tend to log in to a more serious or a more important service for us using the Facebook credential, because it's much easier to say log in through Facebook. So you say, yes, what is happening behind the scenes that is that you give to that application, to that company, permission to use your Facebook account to log in. So when these kind of uh, um, hacks happen in these very co uh, big companies, also can be propagated to a more specific website just because you are signing with the same account. So the way to avoid, say, unless it's necessary for you is to go to the application and check if you have all application that you use, um, again, one year ago, six months ago, and you don't need it anymore, and just remove that permission that you give uh, in order to use your, um, your social network uh, credentials to, to log in. Um, I, I have much more of this, of course, I didn't want it to go too deep because uh, it is more to, uh, to give you some overview of different resources about um, <clears throat> things that we already spoke before, like um, identify fake URL, again, just pay attention to the URL that you are clicking and, uh, and be sure that you are in, in the right, because sometimes a small change, like a, you know, an extra point, an extra old, and, uh, character different can take you to the wrong place and, and be not exactly the, the best thing. Here it's exactly the same links I just put before in the, in the slide. So <clears throat> also that is something that I was um, exploring particular for, for, for this idea was the different parenting control software that there are, and there is a very reliable source that is PC magazine that collect um, uh, or create yearly uh, rankings, let's say of this kind of software, like a parenting control here essentially means uh, in a very broad sense, uh, check the content that the, the different device connected to your network, for example, in your home or, um, or device that you are giving to, to, uh, to our children, uh, what kind of um, browse, um, browse history is happening, you know? what kind of information is collecting. Uh, or essentially, not, not so much to go and see what is happening, but to block certain content that you are, uh, for example, sure that they, they shouldn't be going through those devices. And um, so there is 
again, always kind of free and pays software for, for, for this kind of uh, parenting control that you can check. Essentially, once again, it's not to survive, uh, to make surveillance of the device, but can be also to simply block a certain kind of content and they are getting smarter and smarter. Obviously, it's always a fight you know, between the people who want to send the wrong content and those who want to prevent it. So it's something that we need to review at least once, once a year. It's, it's a good idea. So here again, there are several rankings like VPN, um, <clears throat> the, the standard things like antivirus, but uh, I think this, this uh, can be a good idea also to, to take a look. Maybe you already have it and, uh, and that's good enough. <clears throat> so yes, I think that with this, I, I, I finished this presentation. Again, the idea was to, to pass through different tools and hopefully trigger your curiosity about yourself going to these different uh, data collection and see what they have about you or, or anything, anything else that you may want to, to ask. And thank you.